to another edition here of Krantz's Corner, and yet we are doing all hockey right now. We are getting ready for potentially, potentially the Stanley Cup getting to the Florida Panthers finally after that 8-1 blowout in Edmonton the other night, but we're not really worried about that anymore. That is over with. George Richards, my friend forever, is joining us right here from uh, FloridaHockeyNow.com. See him everywhere, by the way. He's got a cool hat in his bag. We'll check on that later uh, as well. And he's live from... If you haven't been there yet, the brand new Iceplex, right, for the Florida Panthers. Yep, the Baptist Health Iceplex right there. Look at George doing a great job for Baptist Health right there. We should get – that should be our new sponsor for this at least episode uh, at this point. Look at that view George has got, the new pr practice facility, basically, for the Florida Panthers. We're getting a firsthand view right now from George Richard. Well done, George. Look at you. You are you – are, if not a great guest – Maybe the best producer I've had as well on here, uh, getting the best scenery and everything. Welcome back to Krantz's Corner, by the way. Thank you. Speaking of, yeah, about Baptist Health, I mean, they can, yeah, they could, their name's on everything, right? Right. right. Anywhere you turn in South Florida, they they, they should uh, sponsor your show. I, I totally, what's, at least what's our one segment. More, what's one I, more thing? At least my segment with you. That should be at worst. That's what they or, should be doing, right? Or talk to Joe Rose and get a cut at that. Right. Well, he always takes the biggest cut, so we got to be careful with that one as well. You know that, right? You're making the face. Exactly. Little right. cut. Just a little cut. Just, just a, a cut, cut. A little piece. We yeah. just need a piece, right? We don't need yeah. the whole pizza, just a slice. We need a slice of the pizza. That's all there we're asking are. for right there. That's all you are. Good. All right. All right, George. 8-1. We'll get through this real quick, and we we'll go on to yeah. game five coming up. Uh, obviously, uh, not what the Panthers intended and and not what we all thought would happen, uh, but it did happen. Bobrovsky was right. pulled. The defense was bad. Everything just didn't go their way. Uh, is that basically what Paul Maurice and the players have said since then, getting ready now for game five? Yeah, I mean, that, that was just one of those games that got out of control. Uh, a little bit of that snowball effect, right? I mean, listen, it was a 2 nothing game. Florida... Florida could have had a one nothing lead. I mean, they had the power play. They hit a, a pair of posts, and then Edmonton gets a shorthanded goal. Uh, soon it's 2 nothing. Florida makes it 2-1. It could have been a 2-2 game. It wasn't. Listen, that's just how life works. Edmonton was saying the same thing. Game one, Edmonton thought they should have won, but they right. couldn't get anything past Sergei Bobrovsky. Guess what? You didn't win. Guess what, Florida Panthers? It wasn't one nothing. It wasn't 2-2. Two -two. It turned into a blowout. It is what it is. Florida looked slow. They looked methodical. They did not look like the team that we have seen throughout this postseason. And it's an outlier. Right. It, it, you know, these things happen in, a, in, a, in the playoffs when you've been playing as many games as the Florida Panthers have been playing. Um, the travel, the games, the pressure of the games. And then once it got, gets a little bit out of control, it really gets out of control. And that's what we saw. We saw it last year against Vegas. Once it was 5-2 or whatever, it's hard to fake that desperation when right. you're losing like that and you see what happens 8-1. to one. I mean, right. and, and nobody's blaming Bob because it was a garbage show. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I liked how the players came out afterwards when asked about yeah. it. Yeah. And they, you know, because they're, even if Bob did give up crazy goals in the beginning, you're not blaming your goalie for that. That was a blowout. That was eight goals scored is not something we see every night, every week. We never see that. Uh, and, and especially like you said, against this team has been playing so good and they're, and defense, like every aspect's been playing good over the last couple of weeks. Yeah. They have one game here, one game there where they're kind of blow it or, or they're not as good as they should be, but this was an aberration, this 8-1 game. They're going to sleep. They're, they're obviously at home now. They're getting ready uh, for game five coming up. That's it. What's – I'll ask you this, you know, trying to be a very investigative reporter here because I know that you were there for kind of the talk this morning. Ryan Lumberg, and I saw you tweet about that also. You think he's going to be available for the game coming up in game five? Well, you can read all about it at floridahockeynow.com, uh, all the latest information on your Florida Panthers at floridahockeynow.com. Yeah, I think he's in. Um, we were out here at the morning skate. Listen, the, the Panthers, Paul Maurice doesn't make a lot of lineup changes, but he does after a loss, or at least that's been the trend. Florida, after they lost game three to the New York Rangers, replaced Nick Cousins and Ryan Lomberg with Kyle Oposo and Stephen Lawrence. They won six straight. Today we come in here, the Panthers have a couple missing forwards. The guys who are filling in, usually the guys who aren't playing, and it was Lawrence, uh, Lawrence and uh, – Nick Cousins were filling in for Kachuk and, and Bennett. 
Um, Ryan Lomberg was working on the fourth line. They, they, Paul likes to keep the lines together and practice as much as he can. That looks like the fourth line. Ryan Lomberg getting back in, playing with Kyle Oposo. Uh, Paul Maurice, uh, not just post, you know, game, but like obviously today when he talked to cool, calm and collective is normal. Nothing to, you know, like I would just assume because this is the same guy that well, regular season game, they could lose eight one postseason game. They right. could lose eight one. And I feel like it's the same guy in the post game press same conference guy. every time. Right. That's yes. what that's what you saw when, when he talked. He just spoke like it was casual normal. Right. I think if the Panthers lose three, two and double overtime in game four and uh that's when I think you would have seen like a little, maybe a little like, oh, you know, that that one got away from us. Right. This was just a route. Nothing you can do about it. Um, I mean, there is, but it's over now. Uh, no, Paul. Paul's got a very even keel, and 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 I know you were on social media on Saturday night, and you see all the other people. Oh boy, Paul's going to get into that locker room and let right. them have it. He's going right. to let up. No, he's not. That, that's not how he plays this game. Um. Listen, if they've lost four in a row, yeah, he's going to f bomb them to death. If they look like they did in Ottawa, a team, you know, or you know, last year, his famous rant on 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 the on the on the bench, you know, this was a team fighting for its playoff life, and it and it looked like it was, you know, they were dead. He right. gave he you know he tried to light a fire under them, you know, but in this case, in this case, it's a one off. Okay, it just simply is. Uh, he knows how good this team is. He knows what they're capable of doing, um, and he knows Saturday night ain't it. Right, and they'll change it. They want the they want the Stanley Cup as much as he does, and I know how much Paul Maurice wants this thing, um, but his players want it just as bad. And you know, we'll see it. We'll see a different bunch on Tuesday night. Oh, I, I would only assume so at this point. We're going to see game one, two, and three Panthers, not game four Panthers, you know, uh, active on, on Tuesday night. And, and I want to say this, not to try to be a pig or anything, but I am actually glad that they're going to have the chance to win it now in sunrise. Uh, th- listen, getting to four wins is hard no matter where the, the game is, wherever the matchup is. But no. hopefully it does work out in the favor now where they could come back and win this game. It would be fun. And what a turnaround for someone. And I know you've been covering this team for 20 years what a turnaround this would be if all of a sudden they do win the Stanley Cup in sunrise come Tuesday night. Man, that is going to be a spectacle among spectacles here in South Florida. Yeah, I don't know if we talked about this last time, but, you know, in years past, the Panthers used to have a framed picture of the Stanley Cup in their locker room. And what's that? You know, well, that's the goal. That's what we're aiming for. And it was a joke. I mean, it was, right. you know, players laughed at it. I mean, this team was so bad. And, so mismanaged and, and all that stuff. And um, to see what you've got now, to see 20,000 people on a Saturday night in sunrise in an arena to watch a game on television. Right. Um, when we remember games where there were 7,500 people. Maybe. Um, right. And an NHL hockey game. And, and, and this isn't even that far back. I saw a picture I had the other day from 2014. There was 5,000 people. And, and this was like the second game of the season. The Panthers Jeez. had just had opening night where they didn't sell it out. And then game two was an announced like 7,500 or something. Um, if you have 13,000 in that arena, it's so big, it feels empty, right? Right, So right. you can imagine what that felt like. Um, and here we are. And here, and here South Florida is. You've been here forever. Where did the Florida Panthers rank in South Florida? Um Below UM baseball, I would yeah. think, right? Yes. Oh no, hundred. I mean, Bo- behind yes. all not just not UM football, right? But UM basketball and baseball. I mean, all of it. Hundred percent. Not even a question. They were. You could, they were that you could low. have said the yep. NASCAR race. You know, right, was, was right. a bigger thing than than Panthers hockey, um, and that's their own fault. Okay, the Panthers had this town in the palm of their hand and gave it away um, in the t- early two thousands. They did. They were more popular than the Miami Heat at one point. Nobody believes that, but they were. 97, 98, 99, it was the Dolphins, the Panthers, the Heat, the Marlins, all whatever. Right. They lost that. They had fallen so far. Prep sports. I worked at the Herald. Prep sports got better readership than the Panthers. Um, and here they are. And right. uh, it's, it's, it's pretty good, pretty neat to see because 
they always said, listen, we have to win. The Panthers have to win. South Florida doesn't, doesn't, uh, doesn't support a losing thing. And that is true. That is true. But that, if they believe in you, they will. The Miami right. Heat has proven this. The Miami Heat, they can have a 15-win season like they did six, seven, eight years ago. Right. Matt Riley knows what he's doing. He's good. Bill Zito's got that now. The 100%. Panthers never did. The Panthers right. never had that. If the Panthers fall off the face of the earth in a year or two, and, hey, guys, trust us, we're rebuilding. Okay. We trust you. Okay. Right. You know what you're doing. They've got that Pat Riley. Um, okay. That rebuild will be done right. And I'm not saying that's going to happen because the Panthers, Barkov, Kachuk, they've got their main guys signed. The Forsling, I think we're going to throw him in that mix. Forsling's got eight years. So the Panthers have their core. Right. Um, they're not, yeah, I don't think they're going to be rebuilding, but but they've got that they've got that trust now. And right. it wasn't it wasn't just winning, it was sustained winning. Right. This team hasn't missed the playoffs now five years. I mean. But that's what it takes. You know it, George. We we lived down here a very long time. If you're winning, people will show up. If you're winning right. and you're sustainable winning, people are gonna buy Sustain, tickets. Right. Right, and buy, buy season tickets. It obviously happened with the Heat. Uh, the Dolphins are a different animal because I think people are going no matter what, even though they're you know probably not as much you know not as happy as they could be. But obviously they're they're playing a little bit better now. But you go years without going to the playoffs or winning a playoff game, and the Panthers know that, and the Marlins know that, and the Dolphins know that. But you're right, right. the Heat. The Heat were the team that you trusted, and I honestly think that Bill Zito now, like you said, has put himself in such a category here in South Florida. If you really look that everything he's done since he came yep. here from the first move to the move he might have made a week and a half ago on the on the waiver wire whatever it was you're trusting it like and, right. and not only that but how many people knew for a good 20 year span who the general manager of the Panthers were probably no uh, not, right. not until right. Dale Talon right. Right? right i mean Dale Talon had that gravitas right Dale Talon was larger than life uh, people knew who he was um and people trusted Dale he got right. into the playoffs in year in his second season, right? Um, and, and Florida hadn't been to the playoffs in a dozen years. It was an NHL record. Now that belongs to Buffalo. I was on a Buffalo radio station the other day. Let me tell you, going back to the to the Panther, nobody goes to Buffalo Sabre hockey games. Wow. But nobody says, you know, hockey shouldn't be in Buffalo. And I was right. on a Buffalo radio station. I was like, guys, I'm not trying to be a funny guy here. But you you all said that Florida <clears throat> needed to, to, to relocate. Nobody says that about Buffalo, but the Florida fans spoke with their wallets, right? They had had enough 12, 15 years, almost 20 full years Ugh. of inconsistent hockey. People were sick of it. Um, and that's not going to fly. Now, this is what we thought it could be here um, back in 93, 94, 95. Um, there's a reason Wayne Huizenga, very smart guy, built a 20,000-seat hockey arena. He's no dummy. Mm -hmm. um, this thing, you know, maybe it's too big. I don't know. I'm not that smart. But now they're glad they got a 20,000-seat oh, arena. Oh, are you so, kidding me? Right. Um, but, but listen, Buffalo, they're not supporting hockey now because they're sick of it. They are, right. they, are, they are saying enough, all right? We've had 15 years of nonsense. When – so it's not just South Florida. Right, it's, of course. But we get blamed for all of it. The fans leave the games early. No one's right. showing up. It, happens it doesn't everywhere. matter. It doesn't matter right, what it sport. Matter. It could be the Heat game, matter. a playoff game right. where they're getting beat. It could be a Dolphin game where you look. It could be the Canes. You know that all of a sudden the Canes are playing a game on Saturday. There's 12,000 people there, and they are literally just showing that on, on the sports, you know, on ESPN. Right. They're not showing anything right. else. No highlights. They're just showing fans or fans leaving early. So we get that. But I'm really – happy for the Panther fan out there because they finally have someone they could trust, I think, from Vinny all the way down to Bill and the everybody, and it's just great. And the players, too. I think it's a right. destination now. Like, th that's a difference also. Kachuk and Barkov, I mean, this team is really good. This team is not a fluky team. They are a team that really, staying together, could be really good for the next four or five years. Not, this is this is it. We're all in for one year. we got to win it. That's, this is a good team. There are certain GMs in, in 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 sports where they don't spend their owner, owner's money wisely. Where right. you'll say, "Don't give that guy the checkbook." Right? The owner has to kind of keep keep you know things on uh, hands on a little bit. 
you don't have to worry about that, I don't think, with Bill Zito. No. Uh, Vinny, and, and Vinny has given him the checkbook, not only for players, but for this building here right. in Fort Lauderdale. It's a destination place because they – from what I've heard, and I don't know if this is just you know a story, opposing GMs don't want their players seeing this place because <laughs> of where – I mean, Coral Springs was right. fine. It was right. fine. Coral Springs worked great. Um, but when opposing players start working out in this place in July, they're going to be like, wow, this is top notch. It's in Fort Lauderdale. It's, it's what, where they want to be. Right. They're winning. The Panthers don't take shortcuts. They stay an extra day in the travel that costs hundreds of thousands of dollars, um, you know, each year annually right. and they're, they're willing to do it. So. It's a smart move. It's a smart move by Vinny, a smart move by Bill, smart move by everybody, uh, you know, in management when, when they when they did this, because you're right. Who doesn't want to walk out of that ice plex in Fort Lauderdale? And again, right. You know, certain days, it's 105 Paul, degrees outside. That's one thing. But good God, the rest of the time, it's great. Paul Maurice walks to and from work. He lives in Victoria Park. It's right, right here at Holiday Park. He walks. Um, the other guys, we know about the golf carts and stuff. Sergey Bobrovsky rides his bike, you know. Um a lot of guys ride their bikes. They rollerblade. They do whatever. They go out into the park. Um, you know, they play pickleball here. I mean, it's it's neat. They can stay yeah. here all day. There's players coming in and out, um, coming in and out of of this place all day long, all yeah. day long. It's great. Yeah. I think it's a, what a great job they've done there. I mean, literally, great job they've done there. All right, two things that I'm gonna let you ride. First one, what do you expect to see? Game five from the Panthers. Do you expect a, a win at this point? You, you, or do you think that they're going to win this one and just clear things up here in game yeah, five? I, yeah, I think so. I think the yep. Panthers win game five, gentlemen sweep, as they say. Um, listen, Edmonton's going to give you everything they had. You saw the desperation. You saw the desperation in them, but that was playing in front of their own fans. Um, different kind of deal now that they've flown back and. I, I I don't know. I just think you're going to see you're going to see the best of the Panthers, um, the game two Panthers, um, the first forty minutes of game three Panthers. You're going to see the four check back. You're going to see Sergey Bobrovsky uh, play a, a a very good game, and uh, I, I don't know if it's going to be one of those one goal games or if Florida's just going to blow it out. Because right. again, when the wheels fall off, when you know. If Florida's able to get a three nothing lead, or you know, maybe right. it goes in reverse and it, it's all of a sudden it's seven one. I don't know, but it would be nice to see that. It would be nice we'll to see, see just a blowout and a celebration starting midway through the third period, knowing we'll what's going to end up happening. Right. I'll ask for a win. I don't need anything special. I'll just take the win in the Stanley Cup here. All right. Last one. I'm going to okay. let you go, George. George Richards, one of my buddies, uh, FloridaHockeyNow.com, the website for all your Florida Panther and hockey uh, news needs, the whole deal. Get the merchandise, too. He's got great merchandise on there. He always makes funny shirts. All right. So we talk about the sports landscape down here in South Florida. Individual players, obviously. You got the Marinos and the Wades and guys like that. If Barkov wins, the Panthers win and Barkov wins, does Barkov get put in that category close to it at least? You've been around here for a long time. And I'm not saying he has to win the MVP. You know, I don't, I'm not saying that, but – just the way he's kind of the leader of this team, the guy on this team, everyone. Could he make that kind of Mount Rushmore? Could he make that if they win a Stanley Cup? Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, you've got who? You've got you've got Wade. You've got Marino. Right. We're not talking coaches. We're just talking. No, players, no, because right? coaches. What I mean, if coaches, you're going to Shula and Riley. Like, there's going to be. Right, I'm right, just right, talking right. straight players that yeah, have been I think down so. there. I mean, right. Yeah. I, I mean, I think you've got to give it to him because he's been here since day one. Right. Um, he's, you know, it's, it's not like Messi where he's, you know, coming in here at the end of his career um, and playing, you know, on that team. Right. Um, yeah. For the big, yeah. For the, yeah. I, 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 yeah. And I think nationally, I think he's regarded like a, like a Dwayne Wade. Right. right. I mean, right. Du Dwayne Wade is, is respected by everybody, but he's not at that like gigantic, super high level. Um, of superstar he's not Connor you know Barkov isn't Connor McDavid right 
you know, and, and Wade wasn't Steph or, you know, something of that sort. Right, right. So, he wasn't Kobe. He wasn't, he wasn't yeah, Jordan, yeah. but he was the superstar down here. Like Barkov right. is. And, and I think Barkov, Bar right. And I think Barkov has gotten credit for the player he is, but man, when you could add a ring, when you could add a championship, especially to, and I say this to a, the fringe sport down here in hockey, because it's like, you know, for, like you said, for so many years, it was just on the, such on the back end of everyone's mind in the sports world. But now all of a sudden, like you said, they're four or five years straight in the playoffs. Bill Zito's in charge. Vinny's doing a good job. The players are there. The goalies, like you, you all the parts are there. Yet I just wonder, and I, I want to, I want to carve Barkov's face in there. I know I need a Stanley Cup to probably do it because it's yeah. hockey. But I feel like if they win Tuesday night, you can't leave Barkov off that top four list of players, just athletes that have been down here in South Florida. I, I completely agree. I, yeah. I think is with the longitude. I mean, who's who's there for the Marlins? There isn't, right? Because right. Nobody's I mean, you been can't. here long enough. No, nobody's but, been here long enough. No. Marino, I mean, you, Barkov, Wade drafted down here. I know Marino didn't win a, a Super Bowl, but you're talking about Wade drafted down here, right? Wade drafted down here. Barkov drafted down here. Played his entire career down here, yeah. and now has a chance to win a Stanley Cup. And Marino is Marino, so there it is. Let's go. Let's fast forward twenty years from now. Right. You go to a Heat game, you're going to see Wade number three jerseys. You're going to see Marino 13s at a, at a Dolphins game for the rest of time. Um, and you're going to see Barkov 16. Right. And in, in wherever the Panthers arena is in 20 years, you're going to see Barkov jerseys. I mean, he's that. You're right. So there you go. That's right. for I sure. Just, yeah, I he figured from someone transcends, who – yeah. Right. For someone who's been down here forever, like me and you, you know, we could look, we could look past uh, the uh, someone not winning a championship because he was such a superstar like Danny, but right. Dwayne being the superstar and bringing three championships down here. And now Barkov with the shot of being a homegrown first round talent that we drafted, what was going to happen? And then boom, now he's hoisting a Stanley cup in sunrise. If that happens Tuesday night. And they almost uh, didn't draft him. Right, right, right. That's that's the crazy part, right? Like you, you love to even look at those kind of scenarios, the what ifs. Like they showed that picture of I forgot who uh, the GM was at the time. Maybe it was Talon um, of who they were drafting that one year, and like they have four of the guys or three of the guys in that picture yeah. that are on the roster now. So it's, it's really funny how that works out. Um, yeah. All right, well, I'll tell you this: enjoy Tuesday night. Hopefully, this is something awesome for all South Florida and for the media that have been there since kind of day one, like you and some of the randoms that are there, this is cool. This is something exciting because yeah. the Stanley cup finals, it's not just first round of the playoffs and then you're getting knocked out. Like this is big time hockey and this is awesome down here. And the fact that no one knows where sunrise is around the country. I love that more than anything because they all think they're still the Miami Panthers. I love that, but it's, it's a good thing. It's a good thing for all of South Florida. I'm happy for you and the guys that have yeah. covered it. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This whole Miami thing. I mean, come on, that started with Heisinga. That's right. why they're the Florida Panthers. That's why they're the Florida Marlins or were, you know, the story. Right. Um, listen, this isn't Anaheim, Los Angeles. Let's all enjoy this. I mean, right. I mean, come on. It, it's, it's Dade Broward, Palm beach, South Florida, everybody, the keys. I mean, for the keys to the trees, baby, That's the it. beaches to the boon boondocks. Let's uh, everybody enjoy this. Everybody have fun with it. This is everybody's team. And, you know, That's it. Let's do if, it. If we yeah. can somehow yeah. jump into a parade that starts somewhere in Sunrise, Florida, I'll be very happy about that for the rest of my life uh, then and there. George, thanks for your time as always. We'll talk to you again after the series, hopefully after the win. And if you're riding in a car for the parade, I'm going to jump in the car with you somehow, some way. We'll get a Florida Hockey Now van or something, and I'll be in there with you. You know that. With the I'm going to get them. I'll go to Home Depot and get one. Right. We'll just, we'll, we'll paint it on there. We'll tape it on the, the, I'll grab my dad's old van and we're good to go. We can fit like six in there. We're good. We're money 20, 20 bucks a day. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> That's over there. FloridaHockeyNow.com is the website. This is my buddy, pal, George Richards, uh, covering the Panthers for a very long time and now hopefully covering the clincher in Sunrise Tuesday night for the Stanley Cup final. George, thanks for your time. As always, we'll talk to you again soon. All right. Thank you, Zach. All right. Hopefully the Stanley Cup edition, hopefully, of Crancis Quarter here with my man, George Richards. <laughs>